is former Congressman Ted Deutsch, who is now CEO of the American Jewish Committee and CNN legal analyst Jonathan Wackrow. Uh, Congressman, this threat comes as we're seeing a rise in anti-Semitic attacks and threats against politicians. So what were you thinking when you first heard the news this morning? Well, I was thinking that this is sadly one more case of anti-Semitism that nearly led to a horrifically violent outcome. This is less than two weeks after a shooter in Los Angeles shot two people and then made very clear that he was looking for Jewish victims. This person who was arrested in Michigan was looking to kill Jews in the government. This is a through line that is dominating the news in America. And it's not just the Jews who are at risk. It is democracy that's at risk. And we can't afford to only focus on these for a day or so after an arrest is made. We need to understand the threat that it poses every day and act to ensure that it doesn't lead to violence and that we're doing everything we can to, to stop it. Jonathan, you heard Polo reporting that in the court documents, the suspect apparently wanted to create some kind of new country named New Israel. He wrote about it on Twitter. Jonathan, you spent decades in law enforcement. How do these investigations take shape? Well, listen, John, this is a real dangerous individual for multiple reasons. First, his comments posted online that Polo you know, had discussed are really attributed to what's known as the sovereign citizen movement. These are individuals who believe that they're not under the jurisdiction of any law, whether it's U.S., state, or anything. And they, they consider themselves exempt from any type of law. But it goes deeper than that. The roots of this anti-government movement are actually based in anti-Semitism, believing that Jewish people possess this satanic plot to take over the world. And it's bonkers. But the net result of this is a convergence of you know, anti-government and you know, anti-Semitic ideologies. And now you have an individual who feels empowered to really act with impunity um, and going around with this violent rhetoric and, and uh, you know, potentially engage in violent acts, right? So the, the challenge for law enforcement is that this isn't the only individual. There are others that are hiding in plain sight who possess this exact same ideology. Really, from a law enforcement perspective, when they get these types of threats, these types of incidents, they need to look at three main things, the means, the opportunity, and the intent for these individuals to cause harm. In this case, it was the trifecta. This individual had you know, weapons. He had the opportunity to go. He targeted um, you know, Jewish politicians in the state, uh, and he had this opportunity where you know, he telegraphed, you know, that, you know, very broadly that Jewish political figures were at risk. So, uh, again, the, the FBI acted very swiftly in, in collaboration with other technology providers to, to capture this individual and, and, and place them in custody. But we've got to be better than that because these, these ideologies are out there and they're really unmitigated. And we have to, you know, start containing them and suppressing that hate. They're out there and they're out there more than they were. I mean, Congressman, the ADL says that in 2021, anti-Semitic attacks were at an all-time high in the United States. More than 2,700 attacks were reported that year. What is behind well, this jump? Well, you're, you're right about the number. And the survey that, that AJC just put out on anti-Semitism shows that 90% of the American people, as well as 90% of the Jewish community, but 90% of the American people think that, that anti-Semitism is a major concern. It's a risk. There's, that's the reason that over 40% of American Jews feel less secure in our country than was the case just one year ago. That's a 10 percentage point increase. I, there's no justification for anti-Semitism, but I encourage people to take a look at AJC's call to action against anti-Semitism John, which lays out all of the ways society as a whole can respond. It's the reason that the Biden administration deserves credit for launching an interagency task force to combat anti-Semitism. That's what we're grappling with now. It's a whole of society approach that we all have to participate in. We all do. Jonathan, we got about 30 seconds left. You mentioned the sovereign citizens yeah. movement. What's the challenge in investigating or prosecuting someone connected to this? Because the suspect basically denies the authority of the government. Yeah, I mean, it really, it's that that is the challenge of law enforcement. But what they're not doing is we don't prosecute people on what they believe. 
right? We believe in what is our law. And the law says that you can't act this way. And that's what we have to focus mm -hmm. on. Law enforcement has to get ahead of that. And we can't be, you know, we can't normalize this behavior, right? If you look back at the online postings, they've gone on for a long time. We have to get better at identifying that level of hate and, and jumping ahead of it quickly to prevent violent acts. Jonathan Walker, Congressman Ted Deutsch, thank you so much for being here.